I thought this was really interesting to note. So we look at the battleground states, and so much polling is focused on where these undecided voters will go. Trump is going to appear with Polish President Andrzej Zuda on the stage in Pennsylvania. There is a lot, of course, of Polish uh, Americans there in that battleground state. And it's very unique that we have, you know, a, a sitting president, you know, a, a come and actually be on the campaign trail. It goes to show the leaders. We know they're going to Mar-a-Lago, but this is another layer here. And I, I think it could actually put a lot of sharp focus into people who are trying to make up their minds. Yeah. Who's serious, who's not? Trump says you don't go after people if they're not consequential. And, you know, in many ways, we hate to see people trying to, you know, as, attempt to assassinate him. But what are they so afraid of if he gets back in office? Yeah, you know, let me just take this international piece. I've talked to Chris Ruddy uh, with Newsmax about this. Um, you know, when we do these CPACs overseas, there's a lot of politicians that say to Mercy and myself, we want to come campaign with Donald Trump because they want to break the old rules of diplomacy because they feel like there's so much at stake that if America ceases to be America, freedom is extinguished uh, on the globe. And uh, people who live in countries dependent on America's voice when there's a good president like President Trump understand that. So I think it's great that the uh, this uh, Polish elected official will be here uh, in America, someone I have great admiration for. I will tell you that there are many other world leaders I've talked to who uh, want to come, who are calling President Trump, who are talking. Uh, about the need for President Trump. I've never seen anything like this in a presidential campaign. It just shows you how desperate people are for America to get her groove back. Mm -hmm. Well said. And I know you just had a CPAC in Mexico as well. That's a strategic yes. partner here as we look ahead to whoever takes the White House to try to curb uh, the invasion that's been happening. Um, you know, when we look at the U Secret Service and the failures from Butler, now there's, they're going to delay the report most likely. There's the whistleblower report that Tom Cotton said people were on the ground, weren't even trained. We had uh, Senator Tuberville here yesterday saying we should maybe enlist former Navy SEALs. Everything needs to be done to protect Donald Trump. And yet you have Joe Biden saying Congress needs to do this. The Secret Service um, seems to have some issues here internally without even firing one person so far that it has not cleaned up yet. It looks like it's just more stonewalling when every day and every moment counts as we see Donald Trump on the trail. Look, uh, the, we have the CR uh, that uh, House Republicans are negotiating right now. And one of the things they've added to the CR, my understanding, is the SAFE Act, which would... Uh, Make sure that no people here illegally vote. I totally support that effort. But I'd like to add a little bit more to what they're doing in the CR. Withhold non-essential funds to the Secret Service until they have several public press conferences, release all the information on both assassination attempts, and assure the American people from this moment on that Donald Trump is getting Joe Biden and Kamala Harris level Secret Service protection right now. We have the majority in the House. We should demand it. And no Democrat who calls themselves a decent human being would oppose that effort. I would totally agree. Um, so we're watching that very closely as well. And uh, tonight, a big crowd waiting for him on Long Island. Matt Schlapp, always great to have you. Thanks for being with me today. Thank you.